Jesus. Father, we ask you for truth that would change us. Truth that would illuminate. Father, what you're speaking to us today. Truth that would take us to the next level. Truth, Lord, that would make free. Father, we just ask you now for wisdom and understanding. Utterance, exact and precise. Father, as you speak to us today through your word and through my vocal cords, Lord, I ask, Lord, that every heart be open, every mind be alert, Father. Lord, that you may make spirit impartations, life impartations to us, Lord, that will change us forever. Lord, as you change us more and more to, to your image and your likeness, and we thank you and we praise you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we're back on, I don't like to use the word subject, but I don't know any other word at this moment to use, of love. So we're going to go to 1 John 4, and uh, I want to review a little, a few things as we, as we read these scriptures. 1 John 4, I'm going to start in verse 7. Some of you may have recognized that um, I don't, my, my, my assignment, I believe my assignment is to teach you, to train you on how, it's like with the healing service, for me it's not enough for you to come in here and just get healed, to have a healing service, come get healed and go home. I want to teach you how to walk in it, how to live it. So just like with these scriptures here that I'm going to be going to today, uh, as if you remember, I've asked you to go over to read this book of John and others, if you, if you will. And wherever you see the word God, substitute it for the word love. Because, see, I'm not telling you these things on my own. There's somebody with me. God is speaking to us through his word. And I know for me, this has really illuminated. I've been doing it for years with other words, like life. When I see the word God, I would translate and meditate with the word life. Because God is life. He is life. He also is the word. And in doing that with this here, where, where the Lord has us now, this is the next step for our growth and development. It has really illuminated uh, my thinking and brought an understanding in a greater dimension of who we are, what we are, and how to walk in this life. I don't know about you, but for me, I have not experienced all that I feel I should be experiencing in this walk. Has anybody here with me on that? And, 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 and as far as like in my sowing, I have not, I have reaped a hundredfold. I have been reaping, but I would like to reap a lot more than I have been reaping. Anybody with me? Anybody got room in their storehouse for some more reaping? Well, I do believe that this is going to, this, as you read it, meditate on it, as you grab a hold of what the Lord's saying, it's going to help take the caps and the limits off of our, of our reaping. It'll take the limits off of our, off of our faith. And you know, it is faith is how we overcome the world. Faith is how we receive everything that God has to offer. Amen, Pastor Ken. Amen. I want some of that. I, do you want some of it with me? Amen. I do. And I do believe this is, this is very part and partial to that next step of increase. <clears throat> Let me read here. In verse 7. I'm going to try to take my time today. because I, I, It's easy for me to get excited about this. I'm really going to try to restrain myself. So we go nice and slow. And they can get the scriptures up in the back. Amen, Pastor Ken. Amen, Pastor Ken. <laughs> Verse 
Do I go some, too fast for you sometimes? No. No? Okay, well, I'm going to try to take it a little bit slower. Beloved. Are you the beloved? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he's talking to us. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Let's translate and meditate that for a second. Be loved. Let us love one another, for love is of love. Everyone who loves is born of love and knows love. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Say with me. God, God is, is love. love. Say it again. God, God is love. One more time. God, God is love. It's not something he has. It's something he is. He is light. He is the word. He is the life. Let me, let me uh, take you on a little journey through the Bible. In the beginning, God, who is love, created the heavens and the earth. And love said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And let him have this love dominion in the earth and everything that crawls and creeps and flies in the earth created in his image and likeness if God is love then what did he create us to be love. little G's little loves <laughs> probably not the best English but I want you to grab hold of this then to come the fall of man changed everything that he was created, most of everything, into a negative direction. Love became hate. Giving became selfishness. It took the devil 820 years to train Adam how to not love and to die physically because he had learned how to live because love you'll find it is connected love this real love is connected with God it is God and is what we were created to be love vessels created by a love God he perverted everything. They came because of the perversion was so great. God gave the commandments. And I'm going to say this one. This is the top one. Thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy strength. And to what? Love one another. This is not a performance love. This is a, this is, he's telling us how to live, how to come alive again. How to walk in that life. Let me say because coming alive wasn't made available yet. Then as we go through that Jesus came. Redeemed us from that curse so we could be born again. And gave us the new commandment. Which is what? To love one another as he has loved us. These words connect with these other words that I've given you because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that became the light of men. And in that light there is no darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Then we come to Colossians and Paul prayed that we would know this, that we would Increase in the knowledge of God who is love. Increase in the knowledge of Him because He has redeemed us to be qualified us to be partakers of the saints of the inheritance in the saints of light, having translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son of His 
love. Then Paul prayed again that we would be strengthened with might through his spirit in our inner man, that seed, that living word, that living love of God that was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He said that he prayed that we would know the width, the length, and the depth, and the height of that love. That we may comprehend and have a working knowledge of that love. Then he would be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. Can you see that this love, this commandment of love, isn't just a it isn't just a suggestion of good things to do. It's how to choose life. It's how to walk in that life, how to obtain that life, because the enemy had trained us to live in a negative direction, which is opposite of love. It's selfishness, self-preservation, rather than love and giving. And we're going to find out that this living the life of love is not what the enemy has led us to imagine it would be. Although I guess we're just going to have to walk in love. I don't know what else to do. We're just going to have to love him. But we're going to find out that Jesus said that this the walking, obeying this commandment of love produces joy and the fullness of that joy. Amen. It is not a sad thing. It's a, it's a total deception. Jesus talked about it several times in the Bible about laying down our life. Amen. Amen. Because he who loses his life will what? Find it. This has everything to do with living the God kind of eternal life that he has promised. It is not just a suggestion. He's given us instruction on how to obtain Amen. this life. Amen. And it happens through this commandment, obey and being diligent in this thing called love. If you did not go through the Bible, or go through First John and read it, I would ask you to do that again, to read it and interchange the word when it's referring to even him. I like to do it where I see him. Put the word love in there. God, him, he. It'll open up your mind. It'll open up your understanding to a whole other place. Remember Hebrews 11, 6. Here's a key word. He who comes to God, what? Must do two things. Believe that he is. Believe that he's a rewarder of those who, here's the key word, diligently seek to find. I think the Amplified says, those who diligently seek to know him. I don't know about you, but I have found so many Christians and including people that have walked supposedly with God for many years and even in teaching positions. They don't know God. They know the word. They may know a lot of religion. They may know a lot of other things, but you can tell they just don't know God. There's no experience of that life in them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because this is a Bible. This Bible, we talked about this Wednesday night. There is the legal side. And then there's the living side. This is not a legalistic book. There are legalities in the spirit. But this is a, this is a living Bible. It is living word. We can be so um, religious or legal about it. Uh, somebody brought up something about um, calling on the elders. I think it was what it was. Call any sick among you, let him call upon the elders. Or let him pray. You can be legalistic and say, no, you can't call me. you got to pray first. Is there life in that? No. no. There's the living side. If you're not ready, you don't know how, you're, you're unsecure, you're insecure about how to pray for your, for the sickness that's going on, call on the elders. 
There's a, li li there's a living side to every bit of this word, not just the legalistic side. Thou shalt not lie and steal. That'll beat you down. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> <laughs> but this love command, let, well, let, let's read it. Verse 8, he who does not love, what does it say? No, it's not God, but God is love. So can I say, if we do not practice and develop loving one another, we cannot know God? Because this is what we were created to be. This is what causes that new nature that God put in us to grow and to develop into his image and his likeness. Are you with me? You want to know God? Look at verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him who is love. In verse 14 of chapter 3, we know. Remember, He's already qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of saints and light, having delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. And here it says, by this, by that we know we have passed from death to life. How? Because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in, lives in, Hangs out in what? The old nature, the old ways that the enemy has trained us to live. And I believe it's 514 says, this is loving God that we love one another. This is how we love God. This is the core and the foundation. Of everything. It's not just a commandment. This is at the very root. Of this life that God has given us. For anything to be successful. We have to keep our mind. And be aware of this. To grow and develop. This needs to be. Right in the center of our thinking. Continually. In the Old Testament, it said, put it on the gates. Put it on the doorpost. Yep. Put it on the doorpost of your mind. This is the arena or the vein or the flow that God operates in. He lives and moves and operates in love because he is love. You, you can't even pray to God without love. He's a love God. We should pray to love in love. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This is where the supernatural things happen. Amen. Let me say supernatural. That means it supersedes the natural things. Because it's the life of God. We should not be known by what church we go to, what denomination we belong. Amen. We should not be known by any other thing, but the Bible says we should be known by our love for one another. Talking about the brother. Not saying we don't love the world, but it, we're talking about another, another, what would be the right word? Amen. Loving your brothers and your sisters in Christ. First, y'all are too quiet. 
never mad at that. <laughs> Am I going too fast? No, no, no. This is what this is our witness that people outside should see. That we love one another. Man, if you get in with that bunch, man, you got it made. Because we take care of our own. Isn't that what happened in the book of Acts when the New Testament church began? There was nobody suffering lack. Nobody was in need. There was a flow of the Spirit too, wasn't there? There were healings and miracles. Do you know it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance? And that goodness of God is shown through us. We are the lights of this world. We are the salt. We're not supposed to be hide, be hidden underneath of a bushel. This love should be shining. I can see that this is a key to receiving from God. Because we receive from God through our faith, and our faith works how? Hmm? By love. In and through only love. Who is God? We need to be very alert about this. Because it is easy for us to get carnal and think about ourselves. And what that does is it pushes the love of God down until it doesn't even motivate you or direct you to take, to take action like we're supposed to. We should be to the place, I want the Holy Ghost to reach inside each one of us and then you can begin to clean out the stuff, that love pipe, if you will, to let that love begin to flow and come alive within you again. Remember when you first got born again? Yeah. That love was alive. Yeah. I want it to begin to flow in each one of us so we're quickly and easily moved with the infirmities of others. Yes. To when you begin to hear tears start coming to your eyes. Yeah. And you're ready to move quickly yeah. and act. Wait in the spirit. Amen. Quick to respond. Because what that does is that develops your spiritual sensitivity. So that you're not callous anymore. Did you know that'll open up your hearing from God? Yeah. That's how we get to know God. He who does not love does not know God. Can you see how big this is? And it's, yes, we will prosper, but it's not how good we look or how much stuff we have. That's the, not the factor. It's good to have it. He gives us things. But the factor is, you know, you pull up in your nice new shiny car, there's a guy standing there, you don't treat him like he's a piece of hardware like everybody else has. But he sees something in your eyes. He hears something in your voice where you begin to treat him like he means something to you. And I mean, he can tell that you're willing to get rid of that car for his soul. There you are. Come on. Because this is the whole thing. God wants us to love one another more than we love the stuff. Amen. Right. That's why we should never set our love on inanimate things. It should always be on what is the most important thing in the earth? People. People. And I'm not talking about a phony love. I'm talking about a real, genuine love. This love affects people. We can get so busy in doing our own thing and with our stuff that we overlook. How many of you pray for God to direct your thoughts and order your steps? Mm -hmm. I do. But you know, 
There are people we run into that's more spiritual than you may realize, and we forget and don't walk right by and don't acknowledge. Because we're unaware of these things. But yet, this is the, the command that everything else hangs on. What do you think heaven's going to be like? Love everywhere. Love is going to be in the flowers. Love is going to be in the trees. Love is going to be in the people that you meet. Love is what makes heaven heaven. The absence of it is what makes hell, hell. Not to mention the fire. Just look at my nose because I got a lot of good stuff. In this is key to flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. This is what will take us in the greater dimensions of prosperity. Greater dimensions of reaping. Greater levels of receiving. Greater levels of healing and protection and direction. This is where the Spirit, the manifestations of the Spirit operate in this realm of love. Yeah. Kind of sobering, isn't it? Don't think they're not connected because all these things are connected. The reason I talk about the prosperity is because we need to prosper. We need to grow in influence and grace so we can connect and do more outreach so we can reach more people. Yeah. We need these things to do it. And faith and vision are inseparable, but when you begin to walk in love, vision will come. As you begin to work on developing this love for one another, off, you know, the biggest obstacle is the big me. Me, 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 me my, 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 I, I, I. That's the big obstacle. That's why Jesus said, lay down your life for your brothers. Laying down your life, losing your life, you'll find it. Quite out the opposite from what the devil has led us to think or imagine. This is where the life really begins. And it begins to, and it grows, and it grows. Paul prayed that your love would abound even more and more. And the thing is, this is in us. God put it in us. Go to John 13, please. 34. A new commandment I give to you. If you read these next, read the next three or four chapters, and you'll see that he repeats this theme over and over and over and over again. This is how we stay connected to the vine. This is what connects us to the vine. You ever heard that? Abide in in the vine? Yeah. A new commandment I give you that you what? Love one another. As I have loved you, you also love one another. By this you will know that you are my disciples. You are my followers. You are my, that also means imitators. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Is it possible that we can act like, look like God? Yeah. Being created in His image and His likeness and experiencing the very life of God? Yeah. 
hold your finger there. Go to 1 John 3. We're going to come back to this. Hold your finger there. 3, 3, 22. Got it. Uh, whatever we ask, we what? Receive from him. How? Why? Why? He says here, because we keep his commandments and those things that are pleasing and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment. Now I was going to tell you, because this hang all of the commandments. All of the law and the commandments hang on this one. When you fulfill this one, you fulfill all of them. Right? This is his command that we should what? Believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and what? Love one another as he gave us commandments. Two, two commandments here. Faith and love. If you know anything about faith, and you're going to learn something about love too. That's going to keep you busy all day long. Amen. Walking in love. Walking in faith. In every situation you respond in faith. And in love. And you do that. You are keeping the commandments. Just like Jesus. Kept all of his father's commandments. And you'll be pleasing. Now did God. The father manifest. His life in and through Jesus? Huh? So you do that and you will go back over to John, Big John, 50. No, 14. 14. Let's go 14 first. Then we'll go to 15. Did I tell you a verse? No. 14.21. And then we'll go 15.9. Walking in faith and in love. He who has my commandments and keeps them. You're walking in faith and in love. That is the one, you could say, that loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and we will love him, and what? Manifest ourselves to him. You get to experience the love of God. The manifested love of God begins to ex be experienced in your life. Has anybody ever, ever known, did something with God, and you knew that you knew that you knew that you pleased Him? See, you were experiencing the manifested love of God. I mean, hey, if you walked in this all the time, I mean, you'll get up in the morning easier. The birds will sound clearer, better. Your days will be brighter. You won't even worry about your hair. You know, preaching on about the hair. <laughs> that means God, did you read that back then? God is fully pleased with us. And we'll be walking in faith and love. This ought to be preeminent in our walk every day, in the forefront of our thinking. You know, I've I've experienced it many several times. I'm, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say it, so it sounds like I'm boasting. Many times, I would get ready to say, "Thank you, God, for using me." And you know, what He tells me I can hear it so clearly. He says, "No, thank you." He's looking for somebody who will act on what they believe. 
He's looking for a willing vessel. He's looking for a set of hands. You've heard me say this. I was so thrilled when I realized I don't have to work up a healing. I've got the hands. He's got the healing. It's not even based on a whole lot of what I know. Because if I open my mouth and yield to him, he will fill it. That's his promise. So don't think you cannot manifest the love of God through healing or any other kind form of life because you don't know enough. We have record that he used the donkey. I'm not going to use the King James word in the Bible. <laughs> Any of you qualify? I did. I did. And he's using me. Go to fifth, first John. Fifth, I mean, uh, Big John, fifteen nine. He's going to manifest, experiencing the love of God. The Life of God. It's also, well, don't want to go there? No, I'm going to wait. I will go there in a minute. I'm talking about a higher dimension of love, a higher dimension of life, abiding and living in this love. If you keep the commandment to walk in faith, verse 9. Has the Father loved me? I also have loved you. Abide. Live. Dwell in this love. Now you can see right away it's going to take effort. It's not going to happen automatically. He's telling us to live in it. Abide in it. Dwell in it. If, verse 10, you keep my commandments, faith and in love, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you. What did He just speak to us? Live, abide, walk in, operate in this love and these things I'm telling you that you're what? Your joy may be full. That devil's a lying rascal, isn't he? Amen. He's told you lay down your life and you'll never, you lay down your life, you give away your stuff and you'll never have anything. Like the old religious mentality. Father, Lord, you keep the pastor humble, we'll keep him broke. Poor and humble, that's the way the Christian is. That is not so. That's contrary to the word. I have no, I have no shout of excitement out there. I mean, that should excite you. It does. <laughs> hey, man, Pastor, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm doing my best to keep my cool up here because I get excited. I believe it. I believe it. See, because really, you just don't live in Dover or Harrington or Fountain or Texas. You know, you live in here. Your state of spirit, your state of heart, your state of mind, that's where you live. That's why people are so disappointed. They think, well, if I could just move to the Keys, get that condo at the beach, and get my boat, retire, live on my boat in Hawaii. I could be happy. You can't be happy because unless you're right in here, you can be living in the middle of paradise but on the inside being a dark cave because this is where you live. Here's a revelation that's so simple. So many people have missed it. Are you ready? The key to living in this great love 
in this great life is loving other people. It's giving. What was the instruction? Continue in this love. Stay in it. That's where you want to be. More than you want a house. More than you want your stuff. More than anything else. Because living in, in the manifested love of God is what heaven is made of. And the Bible says that we can have a foretaste, and we can have a taste of heaven on earth, doesn't it? Amen. The Bible says we can begin to experience the first fruits of our inheritance. This is our foretaste. Knowing Him that our joy may be made full. Any of you ever gave something that your flesh really liked, but when you gave it, there was a joy on the inside of you that that thing could not give? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Imagine that getting greater and greater and greater. This is the key that will take the limits off it will uncap your receiving. It will uncap uh, what you've been experiencing in God. It will begin, I'm telling you, the life of God will begin. It's all connected. It's all connected. He's in us. He's desiring to live through us. So we can experience, you know, you can, you, I believe, we can begin to walk in a place where the transition out of this life into the next life, it can hardly even be noticed. Amen. Because you're already experiencing it here. If you say, I am a Christ, I am a Christian, an anointed one, I'm like him. You're saying, that's my core. I live to give. I live to love. Now, if you're like me, your next question is, how? Well, as we get in the word, we're going to begin to see it more and more. But I tell you, the number one expression of his love is giving. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. Did he lay down his life? Did he not give us his life? He gave us his earthly life to show us how to do it. And he gave us his earthly life to redeem us again. And now he's still giving his life to make intercession for us. Living is giving. Now, I, I, I certainly don't know about you. And this is what makes our joy absolutely full. I don't know about you, but, you know, I didn't learn a whole lot of giving growing up. No fault to anybody. But you have to practice it. Just start somewhere. Be led by the Lord. Let him show you. You are asking him to order your steps and direct your thoughts. I do. And I've asked him to show me who to give, what to give, and, and how to give it. Right. But I tell you one thing, whatever you do, you've got to do it in faith and in love. I'm not trying to get your money, okay? Doesn't the Bible say it's more blessed to give than to receive? More than to love more than you love money. To love 
others more than you love your stuff? To love others is loving God. I believe God is grooming us to take us to another level. I do. Again, I want to say to you, this is the same flow that the gifts of the Spirit move in. Didn't Paul say in Corinthians, follow after charity or follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, spiritual manifestations of the Holy Spirit? Follow it. I, I think I shared this with you before. There was I, did, I never met this couple. I had another minister talking about. There was an older couple that they uh, they flew they flowed in words of knowledge and uh, word of wisdom and discerning the spirits. And they said that the the accuracy was just amazing. And the lady got up and she would say, she would tell how she did it, how she does it. She said, I would just look, start looking at people. Who does God want to love on today? Yeah. Not that he's not loving on any of us, all of us, but he is. But there's certain people that he wants to love on at this particular time. He wants to move through. Yeah. And she says, she may not know anything, but the love of God is just on that person. God just wants to express his love on that person. So she'll call him up. She said she won't even know until they get up there. And then she'll open her mouth and he'll begin to share different things. This is where the gifts of the Spirit flow. They flow in the love. You get out of love, you're out of the flow of the Spirit. Let me put it this way. You step into fear and you're out of life. This goes together. Go back over to 1 John. I'm going to sum up with this. And then I'm going to pray a prayer. First John 1. 1. In the beginning, God created and then he made man in his image and likeness. And God is love. That which we have heard from the beginning. That which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon with our hands. We have handled concerning the word of life. I want you to notice something when you read this. He's going to begin to interchange the word life. And the word love as we read. And then he's going to step it up a little bit and even add the word anointing or the power of God to remove burdens and destroy yokes. The life was manifested. We have seen and we bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, the God kind of life which was with the Father was manifested to us. We have seen and heard. We declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things I write to you that what? Your joy may be full. Remember, God is love. They're coming to know Him. They have fellowship with Him. This is where He moves. He lives and He moves and we should be having our being in love. He said, this is the message we have heard. Remember, he started out with, from the beginning. Thou shalt, what? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. From the beginning. From the beginning of the New Testament, the beginning of the New Covenant, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you. What? Remember, from the beginning, that you love one another. This is the message that we heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. Remember, we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, do not have the truth. But we walk in the light as he is in the light and we have fellowship with one another. Verse 3 of 2. 
By this we know Him, love, God, if we keep His commandments. What was His commandment? Love one another. Verse 10 says, He who loves his brother abides in light. Remember, he's talking about the light, the life in the beginning. And he's now he's connecting it with the love. And there is no cause for stumbling in him. Verse 24. I'm just doing this for time. Therefore, let that abide in you. Let it live in you. Let it dwell in you. That which you heard from the beginning. What did we hear from the beginning? Love one another. Loving one another is loving God. Therefore, let that abide in you which you've heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide, live, and dwell in the Son and in the Father. And this promise that He has promised us eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning the, those, those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. The life, the love, the anointing is all in the love of loving one another. Can you see why we've had a weak body of believers? Divided and schisms and fractions. The enemy's been doing this a long time. He will get you to not like me because I wore the wrong breeches today. Because I said something. I looked at you wrong. Walked by you, didn't say hello. Anything he can deceive you with and plant that seed, if you walk, if you let him, he will deceive you and you'll be out of love and out of life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do y'all want to do communion or do you want to end? Communion. I want to see at least ten hands or I don't. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, good. Thank you. Stand to your feet. Set yourself in agreement with me right now in this prayer. For the love of God to open up and flow in you and towards people. You know, sitting in here, even today, you could be looking for someone to love on and a word of knowledge will just come up in you. That's how these things work. That's how I minister healing. I know that God loves them as much as He loves me. I want you healed. I want you experiencing this life. Oops, that's my fault. Thank you, sir. I want you to repeat with me. Father God, I acknowledge you are love. And this love is more important than anything else. Because you're more important than anything else. And you are love. And this love is in me. Shed abroad. In my heart. By the Holy Spirit. Anything, Anything. Thank you. that's been a hindrance been a or a restriction, a restriction to this love, I ask you to show it to me. Help me get rid of it. That there may be an unhindered flow of your love, and of your joy, and that our joy may be made full. I thank you, Lord, for bringing us to pass in my life. I make the quality decision 
to remember. I ask you, help me to remember. Show me how to act and when to act. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. If you remember, I'm not going to turn the scriptures there. But I'm going to show you another side of taking communion this morning. It's more on the natural side, even though it's very spiritual. When Paul gave the instructions in there in Corinthians, he talked about people, some people having a feast and other people having nothing. And he said, what, don't you have homes to eat in? See, they were neglecting to love one another. And then he went on to say, talk about judging yourself. And for that reason, of not judging yourself, have I operated, have I treated other people outside of that love? There were many weak and sick and dying among us. It's all right there together. You check it out, Corinthians 10. So as we eat this bread and drink this cup, I want you to remember Jesus died for that person that you don't like. You can repent right now if you have. I repent. I make the change. I make the adjustments. That I will live and walk in love to the best of my ability all the days of my life. And the Lord my God will strengthen me to do it. He'll strengthen you to do it. So we proclaim that Jesus died. He, his body was broken for them and for me. And I proclaim this covenant of life. His blood was shed for them and for me of all of our sins. And I received the very life, the blessing, the redemption right now, the love of God, the flow in me and out of me and through me in Jesus' name. Receive the word. Take it into you. This is easy to form. You're receiving the word that he spoke to you today. You're also receiving the rewards of walking in that word. That he spoke to you today. In Jesus name. Amen. Wow that was breakthrough somewhere. For somebody. Thank you Lord. Father we received the cup. This blood that destroyed sin. And the power of it. In this cup is the destruction of the enemy's heart hold on your life. In this cup is the destruction of the curse. Did you hear me? This blood removed and remitted every sin, every sin known to man, which gave strength to the curse. The curse is broken. I want you to know you've been translated out of the kingdom, the powers of darkness and into the kingdom of the son of his love. Who you have redemption through his blood. Father, we receive the very life, the love, the word, the blessing of God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Anybody have anything? Thank you, Lord. 
Father, I just come in agreement with anybody watching right now. I have come in agreement, Father, and I speak destruction to the hold the enemy has on these people's lives in the name of Jesus. And I say, be set free. Be made whole. Be well in the name of Jesus. My word, my, the words that I would use to speak to you, to encourage you, begin to act like it's already happened. Because it is. It has happened. The, the enemy will begin to fall away as you walk in your freedom. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. Okay. It's good. It's that simple.